I feel like Vitafly gonna recap this and say God he caught a 30 on the dime roll. So all y'all wanna know what happened, I'm gonna tell you what happened. He got smoked. That one was crazy out of the game. Sometimes that's Peter, nobody that knows body. Hit his area with 51. Everything in the Vitafly. We used to rapping like that. And Jesus with him, mini Mac burst, bop, send you backwards. I'm the type that'll put Doc in a box, it's a hidden password. You already know what it is, man. Salute to the subscribers. That notification, gangricegangclothing.com. Log on to the website for the merchandise. You heard me, right? So you got, salute to Showtime SP. Um, nobody that knows bodies, but uh, let's get right to it. So you got Rum Nitty versus B Dot, and um, I'm gonna do a separate blog about the whole um, event. You know what I mean? The the quarantine, the the sterilized, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I'll talk about my thoughts and the other battles and who I think is gonna win or whatever the case may be. But in this one right here, um, first of all, salute to B Dot, salute to Rum Nitty, and Avocado for filming it. I will say this is uh, they came up with a new innovative way to still get content done during this pandemic, you know what I mean? You have a lot of leagues and a lot of battlers and everything struggling to try to really find innovative ways to bring dope content because, um, you know, a lot of people are doing the verse battle, you, you record a verse all over Skype and all of these things. And while some concepts are dope, there are others who are just, you know, a, they're just okay. You know what I mean? Like the Skype battles are cool, but they're not like the real feel of a real actual battle. You know, you had um the Battle Academy. They just had uh, Bill Collector versus Chef Trez. It was a face-to-face -face battle, and then Jay Murder versus Edenes, and um, things like that. So leagues are trying to find their way back to the norm, and some states are starting to open up again. But I would still say be very, very careful with that because um, there's still no cure. So with no cure it means that there's still a problem going on. But states are starting to reopen because of the money, like they need the money. Now, like, let's just call it what it is. But um, so Rum Nitty versus B Dot. Um, this battle goes down on the rooftop, and I will say this: I already knew that uh, going into it. Like when I just heard the names, like I heard, I heard, I heard, I heard that the battles were going to take place. Um, I had spoke to Danny Myers. Um, who was battling Emerson Kennedy and he had told me, you know, what was happening and who was battling who. And I had my ways that I felt, you know what I mean, um, about who, who was battling who and who was doing what. But um, I felt like, matter of fact, let's just throw them all in here. So um, I felt like Geechee Gotti was going to be able to get around uh, B Magic. You know, I felt like B Magic is still on his way back, but it was like, you know, I felt like Geechee Gotti with all that he's doing right now would probably be able to get around to B-Magic even on a rooftop setting but I felt B-Magic may have like a flashback round where he could like steal around and still be around but at the end of the day Gigi Gotti would be able to get past him um, when it comes to Danny Myers and Emerson Kennedy um, Emerson Kennedy's dope, innovative and I'll probably talk about them more in the end of this in this blog but I felt like Danny Myers with his pen and aggression like Emerson Kennedy's dope but he lacks the aggression like you just seen in that Arsenal battle Arsenal out, out out aggressed him on a damn internet battle. He was wilding on him, you know what I mean? So we'll see how that goes, but Emerson Kennedy's pen is dope. But we'll talk more so towards the end of this. And when it came to uh, Rum Nitty versus B Dot, it's funny that Rum Nitty has dope punches, line after line after line, gun line king. But B Dot takes fantastic angles. And I'm going to talk about it in this recap the angles that he's able to take. Like, he's a real intelligent individual, B-Dot, that is, right? And I met B-Dot at uh, 
World Domination 7 in LA. And um, just having a short conversation with him, you could tell by his level of intellect that he's not someone who just is gonna go do the same thing that everyone else does when it comes to battling the rum nitty. He's gonna do something, he's gonna take an angle. He's very intelligent, like he doesn't, he, he's sharp with the pen too, and he don't just take every single battle. You're not gonna see B dot battling this week, then next week, then over the internet, the next, he's not doing all that. Like, no, he, he's just not gonna do it. He even took his career in his own hands, you know what I'm saying? When a lot of people were saying, oh, you just need to sign a contract, or oh, you just need to do this, or you need to do that, he took his own particular path. Like, even when he had the battle versus Emerson Kennedy on um, the West Coast card in this smack. Like, he did some shit that probably nobody ain't never done. And a lot of folks would have probably never even got booked for again when he dropped that, uh, that, that LA gas ain't cheap. Take, take, take rock that LA gas ain't cheap. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, he said, if, if, you, if you ain't about banging straps, hanging around and blazing cats, if battle rap is about all that, then the West Coast is where this shit should be stationed at. He went crazy on him, you know what I mean? And um, a lot of people were still waiting for B-Dot to get his just due. I was waiting for him to really get his just due on URL. Um, and I've seen him, you know, take battles. He just had a two-on-two -two recently with Gigi Gotti that was pretty dope. But um, he comes into this one right here versus Rum Nitty and... And boy, does he ever put on versus Rum Nitty on this rooftop. Now, um, Rum Nitty, I got notes. You know what I'm saying? I, I got notes. And I don't really even write down a lot of bars no more and things like that. You know, most of the time, Showtime SP, he'll get the notes and things like that. But every now and then, you know what I'm saying, I still happen to, my pen, my pen get the moving. You know what I'm saying? And since I couldn't stomach this, I'm gonna let a pen decide us. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the the pen just started moving, so I got my own notes. And you know the whole social distancing thing. Salute to Showtime SP. He'll be here if he could, but you know how it goes. So, Rum Nitty in his first round. Y'all looking around like it ain't no crowd. I'm looking at it like it ain't no witnesses. That's a dope way to put it, because it was just a few people on the roof. I'm looking around like it ain't no witnesses. That was a dope line. Uh, he had. Push it to the limit with the max out. You know, I push it to the limit, bring the max out, rum nitty with the punch lines, you know how it goes. Um, I'm the type that'll put dot in a box, hidden password. When you type in the box, it's a hidden password. We know, you know rum is gonna come with punches. Like, like we already know rum is gonna have punches. Uh, and it don't stop after dot, like et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Don't let none of that get too far ahead of you. It's one of my intros too, so it don't stop after dot like etc. Rum Nitty had a, a multitude of punchlines that were scattered in and out of his first round. Very serviceable round. And the thing is, Rum Nitty has been um, doing this. He's been battling a lot recently. You know what I'm saying? He took uh, he has he has a battle with Mike P that's about to drop. He took this battle right here. He took Bill Collector last week. He had another battle. Like he's battling like every fucking week. Him and Geechee got it. Every, every fucking bar battling every fucking week. You know what I'm saying? So the thing is, I don't think that his pen is getting thin, but when you're battling a lot, you know what I'm saying? You're not going to be able to write them long ass rounds because you're battling a lot. B-Dot comes out in his first round and this nigga, he goes off. He goes clean off. Uh, I got you covered. Twin magazines, you gonna have your issue. I got you covered with twin magazines, you gonna have your issue. You gonna have your issue. Uh, either you a scary crip or a bad judge of character. The whole relationship, you've been ignoring the red flags. You've been ignoring the red flags, the whole relationship. But he's talking about, you know, ignoring the red flags and, you know, beat out his blood. Boy, come, he got the red flag on. Keep going, beat out. I got you. Uh, he says, steady, are you ready? I open up the scene with a belly shot. You know, he takes it back to belly. Steady, are you ready? That was fire. Um, he said, you're going to sleep with deficiency since you think you're autoimmune. Since you're going to sleep with deficiency. The fish and see, that was fire and it wasn't a reach. That was dope. I like that. Uh, then he got into, um, he got into a, a fire ass scheme. Uh, he was talking about, you know, protons, nucleons, he can't get on what I on, you know, what his molecule charged, but he can't be what I on. 
If I'm sending five G's to fuck with your nucleus, it ain't radiation. Now he's talking, you know, because these niggas be talking that radiation shit. Oh, it's not this. It's not the coronavirus. It's the five G. The radiation. I'm woke. That shit sounded stupid from the beginning, but whatever. Um, he said under the lab coat, they ain't know he had it the whole time. No, under the lab coat, he says static under the lab coat. We forget about the static the whole time. Ain't know he had it. He like what? It's asymptomatic. Asymptomatic. Like that was crazy. You know, asympt asymptomatic. B dot is talking in his first. Uh, after the first, I had B dot one o, and pretty clearly too. I'm not gonna lie. I had him pretty clearly in that first. I was like, sheesh, like he has so much material, so many complex schemes, and he was wildin'. Camera angles was dope, avocado, you know, if he's on the stream, you already know it's gonna be wicked. He was both sides panning back and forth and shit. It was, it was definitely, it looked like some shit that didn't happen in quarantine. I'm gonna be, lying, be honest with you. If you're thinking about it, because I know there's folks who watch recaps because, uh, you know, they don't have the app or they just want to see whether it's worth seeing or not, I would definitely say, this one right here is definitely worth peeping. I didn't really like the quarantine joints with the Skype and all of that, but this one right here, and I think <clears throat> that them hearing about the reaction and things like that, reaction causes reaction. You know, when people react to what they see, if they're not feeling it, yo, this is not even like that, what are we doing here? It causes people to step their game up. And I'm not saying we in particular, but I know that a multitude of different people were voicing their opinion, and that's the best part about nowadays, when you got independent, you know, you can say what you want. I'm not feeling it, I'm not feeling it, I'm not feeling it! And they stepped it up, so you know, you gotta give URL uh, their, their credit for stepping it up, because I like these joints better. Do this here. Y'all don't, if y'all gotta have one done in Texas and Florida and New York and get the Jersey niggas to do one, just, just do y'all battles like this. That Skype, let that go. So Nitty's second round, he said, uh, Choppers Enamel, have a brush with death, and ain't no sense in dying. Ain't no sense in dying, sense of dying, sense in dying. Brush with death, sense of dying, I thought that was fire. Uh, you get one in the head since you wanna be loaded, you know, wanna be loaded, wanna be loaded. Um, knocked out and awoke nigga, sleep paralysis, I like that. Snatch your chain. Wondering how much I can get off the ropes. You taking so much punches, your fans screaming, get off the ropes. I thought that was fire. There can only be one loaded like a musket. He had a line about, um, have you calling out for God and hear comedics? Hear comedics, comedic, you know, because of uh, comedic blood. Here comes comedic, here co co comedic, comedic, rum nitty. I got you. You know, I keep these. I keep these around specifically for Rum Nitty, and then I felt like in this one, uh, you definitely was having to, um, to get your punch on because after that first, you had took a couple jabs and you took some body shots. So it was definitely you was definitely having to punch back, and you you was you was getting you was getting hit. Um, <clears throat> he said, "The Don da 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 da, like Louis Rankin. The Don da 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 da, Don da 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 da, Don da da. Salute to the." Uh, the J original Jamaican Dundada, um, B dot second round. Uh, he starts going. Um, he starts going in talking about Miss Hustle. Salute to Miss Hustle. He says, uh, "No conspiracy. If she curve me, I leave your earth flat. You know, curve earth flat earthers. You know, more of that woke shit. Um, I'm gonna kick it off and then wave. So either way, you get you get a fair one. Kick it off then wave. Either way, you get a fair one." Uh, he said, when J.C. Penny showed, you had nothing in store. It's nothing close. You're not a Jason. Um, he was talking about uh, how when Rum Nitty battles against people with pens, you know what I'm saying? Like, they showed a difference in all of that. He said, when J.C. Penny showed, you had nothing in store. Uh, he said, uh, another. he had another fire line. He said, break Nitty style down. He starts to break Nitty style down and talk about why he doesn't use anything but gun lines, you know what I'm saying? Gun lines and names, you know? He said, you got height, but when it comes to stature in the game, but you'll never come with the right angles when you're basic, saying you, you never come with the, you got height in the game, but you never come with the right angles when you're basic. He said, here come with a crip with punches. This is magic. 
Now you got a whole new style. This is madness, you know what I'm saying? Cause you know niggas be doing that. That, that you know the shit that fucking the, the, the shaky gun hand and shit like that. He said you got a whole new style. This is madness. Um, then he had a line about um, when we say we need food for thought, that don't mean cater with the ratchets. Cater with the ratchets. Um, he then went on to say um, he had a line about all aboard. You know you body people, but we never know this locomotive. Fire second round. Um, what I think is that uh, B dot what he did in his second round. I was re I've been reading Sun Tzu's The Art of War, and um, he went with the weak and strong points, like number six. It says, uh, Sun Tzu said, whoever is in the field first and awaits the coming of the enemy will be fresh for the fight. Whoever is second in the field has to hasten. The battle will arrive exhausted. Therefore, the clever combatant opposes his will, but does not allow the enemy's will to be imposed on him by holding out advantages to him. He can cause the enemy to approach on his own accord by inflicting damage. He will make it impossible for the enemy to draw near. If the enemy is taking his case, he can harass him. If he is supplied with food, he can starve him out. If quietly encaped, he can force him to move. Appear at points which the enemy must hasten to defend. March swiftly to places where you are not expected. An army may march to great distances without the stress if it marches through the country where the enemy is not. Um, being that as a man, like I said, I've been reading different books and things during this quarantine, and um, B. Dot second round was very well calculated, and he was prepared, and he attacked Rum Nitty's weak points, which is not being much of an angler, which is always you know the punch, the punch, the punch. But he's saying. You're catering with the ratchets, like that's what you do, but you know, you're the leader of the new school and the new wave, but you can be broken down because this is something that you don't do. What your weakest point is, is my strongest point. Like b is very, very, very strong with the angles and very strong with making something look crazy. When you look at it from a, a wide lens, you're like, damn, yo, he's really talking about the fact that b Dot rarely ever angles doesn't use angles well and the only time he ever did use an angle was against Tay Rock and it fell flat, you know what I'm saying? And based off the fact that B Dot had way more it's only a 16 minute battle maybe, but B Dot's rounds were like the majority of this time. His first round was had a decent, you know, amount of time. The second round did too. Rum Nitty's second round was fire. I think the second round to me is the most debatable. You know what I'm saying? The most, the most debatable. Uh, third round Rum Nitty, uh, he didn't really, like his round may have been a minute long. I'm gonna be honest with you. And I fuck with Rum Nitty. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm like one of the only people that ever really does interviews with Rum Nitty, like, or like on the phone and all of that. And um, I have a good relationship with Rum Nitty. I've known Rum Nitty for a couple years now. You know what I'm saying? And I know uh, I've watched him evolve, and um, his third round, be honest with you, I only had uh, one line, Marlon Wayne's in Above the Rim, never Jersey, you know what I'm saying, and he had some other material, but it kind of was almost fillerish in his third round, he wasn't punching back to back, and he got to one line, with Marlon Wayne's in Above the Rim, I never Jersey, and his round may have been a minute long, I didn't time it, but it may have been it may have been a minute long. I'm just be honest with you. Uh, B dot third round. He comes out and he starts to attack again. He starts talking about all these niggas clicking up. Yeah, you need someone to have your back because you're spineless. You know all these battle rap clicks and groups and everybody wants to be crew, crew, crew. And um, I think Calico had even took a shot at uh, B dot and um, Rum Nitty about this battle. He was saying, you know, y'all, all y'all niggas is doing is showing so much love and respect for each other. And uh, you know, he, he said something to the term of, I, I'll pull it up, y'all 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 don't, if you walk with me this far, just keep on walking, you know what I'm saying? We almost at the end, tell a friend, you know what I'm saying? We, we, we almost there, we almost there, let's make it fair, we almost there. Um, he says, uh, oh, here we go. Um, B Dot said, I'm finally watching the battle. Hey, Rum Nitty, you tried to kill me in that second. That's some of the best shit I ever stood in front of, my nigga. Salute, King. Or salute, my nigga. And then Cal said, if y'all BFFs, then why battle in the first place, baby Lux? And then B-Dot says, because I got paid. The fuck? 
And then Calico then said, breaking bread with your brother, okay, for in the future reference, Stone Cold and Rock the Fuck hoes together at one point and got money together. But me as a fan, never knew until 15 years later. The secretive friendship is what made them great. Saying, you know, the Rock and them was, was friends, but, you know, it, they, the fact that y'all are outward friends and y'all battling against each other. But now fans react to that by saying, look, Y'all niggas, the, the, the older generation, like the Rexes and a lot of these niggas, they be spitting fucking mixtape verses. So it's like you would rather have two friends go at it that's going to bring competition than to have niggas bringing mixtape verses. But anyway, uh, he said, you only under the sea for the view, for the look, scuba diver. He said, y'all drugs, y'all drug red rags into the venue when my motto is, it ain't got to be on you when it's in you. Oh shit! Man, like, you know, so many of these gang bang bang gang bang rappers be bringing flags and all this other shit. And B Dot, even though he is a blood, he doesn't really like heavily have to drag rags in the venue and throw rags in people's face. It ain't gotta be on you when it's in you. Then he had a bipolar cap C level bar. Uh, overall, B Dot uh, was way 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 too prepared. Um, he said the type to ask a nigga where he from, then bang, it was a no brainer. Uh, very, very well prepared. Uh, even though this is an on the rooftop, uh, short round setting, uh, B Dot was prepared. I got him 2 1, if not 3 0 in this battle, uh, clearly winning. I got him clearly winning. The first and the third, the second is up for debate. There's gonna be some people who's gonna give B Dot 30, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I will definitely say, I got B Dot clearly winning though, so let's just do it like that. I love Rum Nitty, I love what he does, um, but. The rounds weren't long enough. When you got somebody that's dumping clips back to back to back to back to back and breaking your whole style down, talking about the strong points, what you do versus what you don't do, and your round is like a minute or two long, a minute and a third, and this is the best way I can put it for you, right? I got B-Dot clearly taking the third because Rum Nitty's third round was a minute and maybe 106 in part. And B Dot's third round had the you know the time and everything. He was talking talk about wild shit. I didn't have B Dot down 2-0 going into the third. So that's the easiest way for me to determine who won a battle. If somebody if the battle is close or one one or whatever the case may be going into the third and the person clearly wins the third, that's how I feel pick who, who won the battle. Now, like I said, Rum has been battling a lot recently. So with that being said, when you're battling a lot over and over and over and over. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it, it gets like that. The pen, I, I don't think he runs out because the penetrate, he, the pen is a trait for him. So he's always going to be able to do it. But uh, I heard this battle was on short prep. And for Rum Diddy, like his third, it definitely seems like it was on um, short prep. But salute to the subscribers. That notification, gang, I know y'all be on, on, on our back. But yo, the battle dropped five minutes ago. We need the recap. We need the recap. But dog, you know what I'm saying? People do have jobs and things like that too. You know what I'm saying? So um, we make we make it work. But uh, here it goes. Um, salute to the subscribers. That notification gang. Salute to Showtime SP. Be back at y'all in a second. Boom. But B Dot. B Dot. He's definitely shown his worth. Uh, showing his worth. If he hasn't already showed you, you you will see it in this. The bars were there. They were the bars were up to par. He was wilding. Shit is crazy. This recap is longer than the battle. Gone. Ah. Keep the thing tough like a mouth bunny. Sold out shows on the road, I know the crowd love me. 